photosynthetic apparatus comprises of chloroplast and photosynthetic pigments these chloroplast isn't it becoming boring guys of leaves so let's make it more interesting and let's dive into the topic of photosynthetic apparatus and try to understand how chloroplast and photosynthetic pigments play a vital role in the process of photosynthesis so hello everyone this is shikhar welcome back to the channel and if you end up liking this video then don't forget to hit the like button and still if you haven't subscribed to my youtube channel then hit the red subscribe button and also follow me on facebook and instagram both the links given down below So before getting into the topic of photosynthetic apparatus let's briefly discuss photosynthesis so basically the term photosynthesis has been composed of two individual terms photo and synthesis as we all are familiar photo means light and synthesis means putting together so the process of formation of glucose and oxygen in the presence of sunlight carbon dioxide and water is known as photosynthesis the glucose that is produced through photosynthesis is utilized by the plants and the oxygen molecules are released in the atmosphere which we the human beings and animals inhale photosynthesis involves the conversion of light energy into the chemical energy the photosynthetic apparatus plays a vital role in this conversion The photosynthetic apparatus includes chloroplast and photosynthetic pigments. Chloroplasts serve as the main site for photosynthesis to take place. Chloroplasts structure and function. Chloroplasts are located in the mesophyll cells of leaves. higher plants these microscopic cell organelles are generally lens shaped and measure approximately 2 to 4 micrometer in width and 5 to 10 micrometer in length chloroplasts were first identified by a german biologist t engelmann in the year 1881 these chloroplasts generate metabolic energy and contain their own genetic material So friends are you excited to look into the ultra structure of chloroplast the electron microscopy studies reveal that the chloroplast are bounded by a double membranous lipoproteinaceous structure called the chloroplast envelope the space present between the two membranes is called periplastidial space having the thickness of 25 to 75 armstrong the outer membrane of chloroplast envelope contains porins and is therefore freely permeable to small molecules in contrast the inner membrane is impermeable to ions and metabolites which are therefore able to enter chloroplast only via specific membrane transporters the stroma is the inner matrix of chloroplast which fills the inner hollow space in higher plants stroma contains several small cylindrical structures called grana each grana is composed of 10 to 50 disc like membranous structure called thylakoids each granum is filled with chlorophyll which is the main photosynthetic pigment we'll be discussing the photosynthetic pigments in the later part of this video the space inside a thylakoid is called lumen while the space outside the thylakoid but within the chloroplast envelope is the stroma which contains the enzymes responsible for glucose synthesis the stroma of a chloroplast contains small double stranded circular dna molecules 70s ribosomes lipids and proteins since chloroplast can replicate independently and can synthesize their own proteins they are also known as semi autonomous cell organelles functions of chloroplast chloroplast are mainly responsible for photosynthesis to take place 
They are also responsible for the photosynthetic conversion of carbon dioxide to carbohydrates. Chloroplasts synthesize amino acid, fatty acid and the lipid components of their own membranes. The reduction of nitrite to ammonia which is an essential step in the incorporation of nitrogen into organic compounds also occur in chloroplasts. During photosynthesis, chloroplasts absorb carbon dioxide from atmosphere and photolyze water to release oxygen. This oxygen is utilized by living beings during respiration. Thus, chloroplasts play a vital role in controlling the concentration of carbon dioxide and oxygen in the atmosphere. So now, let's move on to the second part of photosynthetic apparatus that is the photosynthetic pigments. Pigments are chemical compounds which absorb certain wavelengths of visible light. In plants, photosynthetic pigments are the means by which the energy of sunlight is captured for photosynthesis. However, since each pigment reacts only with a narrow range of spectrum, there is usually a need to produce several kinds of pigments, each of a different color, to capture more of the sun's energy. So if we classify broadly, there are three major classes of pigments chlorophyll, carotenoids, and phycobilins. Let's discuss them one by one. Chlorophyll is a green pigment found within chloroplasts of all green plants and is directly involved in the process of photosynthesis. The structure of chlorophyll contains a porphyrin ring which allows the free movement of electrons. Due to this movement, the ring has the potential to gain or lose electrons easily. This is the fundamental process by which chlorophyll captures the energy of sunlight. There are several kinds of chlorophyll, the most important being chlorophyll A which is found in all the green plants, chlorophyll B which is found only in green algae and chlorophyll C which is found in brown algae and diatoms. Carotenoids are usually red, orange or yellow pigments. They cannot transfer sunlight energy directly into the photosynthetic pathway, hence are called accessory pigments. They pick up nascent oxygen released during photooxidation of water and change them into molecular state, thereby protecting chlorophyll molecules from photooxidation. Phycobilins are red or blue colored pigments found only in blue-green algae and red algae. These pigments absorb light energy of sunlight and transfer it to the chlorophyll molecules during light reaction. So friends, this was all about photosynthetic apparatus. In the very beginning of this video, we have discussed how green plants prepare their own food by the process of photosynthesis and release oxygen in the atmosphere. Then we looked into the ultrastructure of chloroplast and discussed the functions of chloroplast. And towards the end, we have discussed the photosynthetic pigments that trap the sunlight and help in the conversion of solar energy into the chemical energy. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Until next time, hope to see you again. Goodbye.